I mean, can we get a glide check? Yep, plays the card glide. Well, we've probably got a game on our hands then. Yeah, a combination of a few things, right? The removal is there if Rogue decides, or if Gabby in this instance, of course, decides to play tempo. So the removal's there, the heal's there to at least keep Tice relatively healthy and not be dead to, you know, some of the long shot Garot plays that we see Rogues have to make sometimes. And then, of yeah. course, as you rightly pointed out, the glides to just really decimate the general plan of Garot Rogue, which is to just gather tons of cards in hand, reduce them down, and then pop off. So already getting into game number one, I see a glide from Tice. I also see a pretty solid opening hand from Gabby as well. Close. Evil draws close. These two did have a little back and forth on Twitter. A very, very good spirited back and forth on Twitter, I think it needs to be said. Because even with uh, Gabby, the, uh, the the little bit of smack talk he likes to throw out there, the little bit of toxicity he sprinkles into things every now and again, you can't throw shade at Tice. It's impossible. I think if you tried to do it, you'd just explode. I think it's, it's actually that difficult to do. So they had a very respectful back and forth. It's looking forward to playing you tomorrow and you know you're a legend yeah you too i've heard you're really good looking forward to play you like that kind of stuff and it just made me sick in my mouth raven one day these two fires to come out here and crush each other one day i want tice to have a conversation like that with someone and just be like yeah i heard you suck <laughs> out of nowhere it would be incredible and so not expected in any way uh, i oh one day so It'll happen, I swear. Uh, also, quick, no, before we truly happy. dive into the game, even though it's one well truly started, appreciate Gabby's new cut. You can see there, yes. sharp, sharp haircut, Indeed. not bad. Uh, but yes, diving in now, the glide is already on the outcast position. Uh, in effect for Tice, of course, needs to be outcast to affect Gabby's hand. Also can plow forward with this quest progression as well, but how important do you think Magtheridon could be in the matchup versus Rogue as well? Yeah, huge. 12-12 uh, does not really get killed unless it's a Shadow Step Prize Plunderer play, but probably with an already discounted hand to begin with as well, because 12 is a big number even with a Shadow Step involved. Obviously, there's a Brain Freeze to potentially lock it out. Um, but yeah, you know, as we were just setting up kind of high-level stuff about the matchup, I think it's a lot of intricate stuff has already happened because... I think even the debate of keeping and playing Shroud that early is an interesting one because obviously Shroud gets thrown away with that um, glide and it's actually worse than you might think as well because it's very easy to process it right as well. I draw these two cards and then they get glided away. That sucks. However, if you wait, if you have a Shroud in your hand and you don't play it and you get you get Glidden or Glowed or whatever we're saying, um, it rotates away, you lose less cards, but you also get one more card draw card shuffled into your deck at that point. So your recovery ability after a glide is higher because you still have increased right. card draw going right. on. Um, Gabby in the end chose to go for the Shroud on curve, which I think with his particular hand made sense because now as we catch up with the present, he had the ability to just drop Colt Neophyte the very next turn and play around that glide coming down and now has the ability to go more Tempo King instead and actually clear up this situation. I think in response to that, dropping the Maggie is a very smart play from Tice because he should be able to clear the board no matter what next turn. Oh, you say that, Saul, but Gabby just has the option to make the big brain play and just shadow step one of them. No, not a fan. He's doing it. Yep. Yeah, Love to sense. see it. Because uh, in, uh, that's a nod from Tice. In case you are not fully aware, of course, the Magtheridon requires you to kill three of the uh, uh, of the Wardens, not any that are alive, if that makes sense. Yes. So if there's like two alive and you kill them, it's not clear the board of Wardens, it's kill yes. the three you summon. Yes, exactly. And crucially, it digs even deeper than that. It has to be the three that are summoned from the original Battle Cry because there's weird worlds where stuff's like got copied and play, like changed sides on the board and all this kind of nonsense in the past. Raised it's dead. Very weird interactions, but yeah, raised dead even in some spots. But yeah, Shadow Step, Transform Effects, Revolve, all that kind of stuff um, generally is the best way to play around it. It's a Good catch from Gabby, he certainly knows. I actually saw him, I can't remember what stream he was in, might have been Blyze. Um, I was watching with Gabby in chat, 
And I think it was a matchup between Blyze and Dury winner, maybe, where uh, everyone was just like, oh, he's just going to shadow step one of the one threes and then you lose. And Gabby was just in chat like, oh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Only, only high level players know about that interaction. So, yeah, I mean, very fitting, I suppose, that he now kicks off this matchup by uh, showing off one of the cute interactions with Magtherodon. And Tice gives the smile over as well. I'm just glad that Gabby's confirmed I'm a high level player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Really it's true. Okay with it. I'll have to remind him of that later. But yeah, good play. And and to be fair, it's not like Tice made any kind of blunder. You play Magtherodon, you hope they don't have Shadow Step, and then you look fantastic. If they do, it's not like it was your soul win condition, right? So hmm. although not happy at seeing the Shadow Step, it's definitely not the end of the world. Yeah, and I think, you know, when I talk about how he has the ability to clear the board no matter what, he kind of still does, right? Yeah, like I, yeah. I factor the Shadow Step into that. He could have still cleared the board that turn if he really wanted to. It's just he's choosing to leave it there because he has the rebound ability with the uh, the Fell Screen Blasts alongside the spell damage anyway. It's not like the board was in sort of significant size where there was like some kind of 20-20 on the other side of the board that he actually needed the Magtherodon to go off to kill the stuff. Now, if you want to make the ultimate big brain play, Gabby lets Tice win the board, and then as soon as he's got, he plays Jason, it lives and has a wide board, he procs the Magtherodon. Easy. <laughs> Just plays it down himself and kills it. And kills it. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Here, though, Gabby is definitely playing that... Uh, the tempo plan with the help of those extra one threes, I guess. But again, Tice on 14 health looks dangerous, but he has access to a lot of heal if he really wants it, right? He's got double Arcanist, double Fell Screen Blast in hand. And again, it's not like he's waiting for Ilkanoth to use these combo pieces for that. It's not there. Right. Hmm. So is it now clearing time? Tice has been very focused so far and just getting on with his quest and largely ignoring what Gabby has been doing on the other side, but can he? he's probably approaching the position where he needs to think about clearing some of this up. Can he clear and then glide? Because then he shuffles the 1-3 uh, the into the deck, which means Gabby has a dead draw. Is that ever worth considering? I don't or do you think his it. hand quality is too good? No, I quite like it, actually, especially because he can still work in the sigil there as well. Dump everything down. I think this is quite nice. There's Curtis active as well. And with Illidari studies to follow up with, that's one of those cards you look for, right? With the Curtis into Illidari studies to fish for the um, Spectral. Decent rebound, ha rebound hand, sorry, from Gabby has to be said, though. Picking up two sources of card draw and an Octobot off the Glide. Certainly not completely bricking here. This Swindle hits the field contact as the minion he'll be in business. That certainly is not it, though. That is no value whatsoever. I go Secret Passage instead, and... One, mean, one thief, thief okay. hard draw, I imagine. No, none of that. Got the devolving for the Magtherod, and if that's ever a fact. But more importantly, probably for the uh, the Kurtris, because it's one of the things that maybe doesn't show up too often, but these quest rewards are only five drops and are overstated. So yes. if, you, uh, if you devolve them, they often drop many levels of attack and health. Yes, it's not quite a 4-mana 12-12 level of devolution, but yes, yeah. it will certainly help out. More importantly, it'll actually be on the board. Tice can kill this Octobot in one swing with a Fury, but we can see the Oasis ally actually adds a certain level of problem to that scenario, right? Yeah, and Tice has narrowed down basically everything else at this point. So uh, I think he knows yeah. what he's dealing with. Ooh. Any real reason not to sigil this turn? 
Don't think so. I think Tice is more concerned about where this attack is yeah. going, right? Because he can kill the Penflinger, but if he kills the Penflinger, there's a Water Elemental. If there's a Water Elemental, this is not, again, Ilganoth OTK Demon Hunter. So if there's a Water Elemental, his deck kind of does nothing for the entire rest of the game. I guess that's why I was a little bit surprised at the pause, because if he pressed Chaos Strike, surely yes. he's never attacking a minion. Because if yes. he wanted to kill a minion, you'd kill the Octo. Well, to do that, he would be not playing Kurtris, right? So I don't think it's necessarily cut and draw, right. cut and draw like that. Oh, you, you say you play yeah, Fury instead of yeah, the Chaos Strike. Yeah, Fury yeah. Hero Power, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, in order to do that, he wouldn't be drawing a card that turn right. for the Kurtris. Right. Again, is the difference. But yes, you are right. That is probably significantly more worth it. Probably. Oh, Blades for that's a good zero. One. Getting both discs. That's a good one. I mean, perfect. Yeah, could not have set that up any better if he tried. All right, a little worse that time around. Yeah, they're, they're not quite as good, but okay. <laughs> I think we're opening the studies box. Yeah, important thing to remember, and one thing that wasn't completely obvious first time round, uh, when I first looked at this version of the list, is that yeah. Guild Trader Fell Barrage is... <laughs> It hits pretty hard, and you can stack them as well. So it's one thing just to keep an eye on that. Although it feels weird that like only the um, the Jace feels like the win condition because there's no Ilganoth. Just the fact that Guild Traders Felbrage uh, exists is something to keep. just keep an eye on in terms of the health total. Got a little curious about this turn from Tice. Uh, I imagine it will be the Octo that goes back to yeah. the deck. Yeah, but this also smelled a bit like an opportunity to set him up and knock him down with the Water Elemental, right? Like actually hero power into something, get the Watermelon. Uh, watermelon. Watermelon. <laughs> watermelon Ento. Get the Watermelon Elemental on the board and uh, then actually clear it out with like Guild Trader Immolation Aura or something like that. But I guess he's just committing at this point to not attacking mm. into a minion ever which is realistic. I think that is something he can reasonably achieve it. It's quiet. Too quiet. Care to make a wager, friend? Muzzle their magic! <laughs> hey, and there it is. Yeah. Cards left for Gabby. No Shadow Step, of course. Yeah, he, uh, he's staring at the rewards he had for the Shadow Step earlier on. Yes. But still got a second Field Contact in there, so this Field Contact doesn't have to get all the work done, but it definitely needs to help. And there is the second Contact. Gabby's been uh, waiting patiently for Field Contacts the entire game. Uh, gave a little, well, thank you, finally, you showed up when the first one appeared. He does now have the second one, but he is oh. in real trouble in terms of overall damage because he is down to the three breakpoint, right? The plus one breakpoint, so eight times three for 24 damage. And uh, Gabby, can, sorry, Tice can already get above that, which means Gabby has to put together some kind of tempo plan, some kind of attack with minions plan to actually get this done. So does Tice trade the guild trader first and then potentially glide here? I think so, right? Oh! Mm -hmm. Never mind. That <laughs> clears. Yep. An immolation aura inside there. Seems good. I'm waiting for the Arcanist Guild Trader Fel Barrage Lethal. Furies and Chaos Strikes will get wrapped into this as well, so he's certainly going to full at the very least this turn. Yeah. Plenty of damage. And next turn, I'm ready. My body is ready, Raven. You can even, like, almost guarantee it all go face, right? Because you just go Guild Trader, Fell Screen, Blast, Arcanist, Fell Barrage. Yep. Oh, In most circumstances, unless the board gets crazy wide, he's, he's feeling safe. Hey! It's back. Didn't pick ten. I wonder why. <laughs> oh come on, Gabby! What are you doing? Don't let us Robbery. have our fun. 
No. Tice takes the victory though, and again, that was one of the uh, one of the impressive games of two games we've seen with this word, with this demon hunter list in a, like I said, a much better matchup, right? It just doesn't line up as well versus the mage, but in a lot of other, especially board focused decks that we have in the meta right now, it looks so strong. I mean, we we um, saw and, and played it again in the hunter matchup, and it was like, yeah, just just keep hitting me, it's fine, because I can heal for a million, and then I kill you. So yeah, I'm looking pretty good there from Tice uh, getting the victory. And what kind of impact do you think that win now has on the rest of the series as Gabby looking to lock in his Druid for the next game, Sato? Not that much, I would say. Obviously, a win is a win. It's a third of the way towards victory in, um, I guess, literal terms, but sometimes not practical terms with how a series breaks down. And I think when you're building a lineup, um, you bring Garot Rogue and you say, this probably loses to my opponent's Demon Hunter. That's not the Demon Hunter you were expecting to see, but you're expecting your Rogue to lose to your opponent's Demon Hunter unless they're playing pure fell Demon Hunter, right? Mm. Um, because of the card Glide being so disruptive, Immolation Aura being so efficient, yada yada yada, all of that good stuff. So I think Gabby in general is still in a fine position in the series overall. I think now we sort of get to talk about where hybridizing a deck starts to gain and lose things. And this is a dynamic we've seen going all the way back to like the Hunter days when there was Face Hunter, Midrange Hunter and Hybrid Hunter. And you had some, some decks with High Main and Argent Horse Rider, but also an abusive Sergeant and a Lepanome, and some decks that played Howl Masters instead, an extra beast, and all this kind of stuff, and you gained and lost things in different matchups. Over Fell Demon Hunter, you gain Glide against Rogue, which is insane. That ups your matchup significantly. But against Celestial Druid, you lose Ilganoth, which sucks because you don't really have any real ability to get any kind of combo through the amount of armor gain that they have av available, particularly after Celestial Alignment, where you know zero mana Ilganoths off a Skull or something were just about the only way that you had to get the job done in the matchup. So obviously you gain and lose various things when you start to uh, ship various decks together in the way that this particular Demon Hunter deck has done for uh, this practice group. It's important to note though, Gabby's Druid is of course the token version as well. It isn't the yeah. full sort of uh, Celestial with Cthune and, and Gadget Zen, so it does have that alternate approach, but I, I do agree. I think even like Gabby might only really go for the Glowfly approach if it's kind of just handed to him, and it's not going to be something he's actively looking for, because a Glowfly kind of aggro style is probably something Tice wants Gabby to do, as opposed to the celestial shenanigans with, as you mentioned, you know, the likes of Scenario and Ward and such, causing the real issues in the matchup. Yeah, and I think that's already indicated with um, rushing to overgrowth very quickly, as opposed to just going to Fungal Fortunes. He does want to just ramp and play big things as quickly as possible in this game. Reduction down. Not much else to do with the turn. You can hold the coin here. All right. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, Curve ship play. it. That's an anaconda with solar germination fungal fortunes in hand. I mean, yeah. it's not a very big hand, but it is a very dreamy one for an anaconda draw. The big anaconda, though. Mm-hmm. Wait. Go on. I'm waiting. Oh, was he just off? I don't know, Raven. I don't know what you're talking about. So Fury's only two, words. right? So he, Fury's only two, yeah. So I was working out if he could have coined and then uh, glide. He could coin, k kill the claw machine and then glide. So put the anaconda nice. back. The, oh, to put the anaconda back. Right, 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 yeah, I like it. But the because the Fiori's only two, he would have had to hero power, which is two mana. That obviously mm -hmm. means he cannot then coin into Glide. Mm -hmm. Just a play I was looking at. Gotta do some fancy stuff. That's a decent idea to look at. It does mean he can now potentially do that this turn, but he's now drawn so many cards on this turn that does he necessarily want to be gliding it all away on the following turn? We shall see. Then the next question is Is Gabby just gonna kill it himself? <laughs> Doesn't matter because he can't play it this turn anyway. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah, if there was a way, you'd be pretty interested in it, right? Oh, yeah. And then next level... Are you ready? Go on. Does he germination it? Because then Tice has to kill two. Because if he kills one and glides, the second one will draw it back. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are the kind of raven lines that we need in GM, honestly. Yeah. Got to if think people played it. like that, it would be more... Hmm. <laughs> yep, careful. <laughs> Don't get fired. Predictable. There you go. Yeah. I believe they're interesting is the go-to. Ah, I see. My bad. <laughs> Didn't get the memo. It would be funny though, wouldn't it? You know, Gabby, instead of trying to prioritize card draw, he's just priori uh, prioritizing going face. Which I actually really like, because it just forces Tice to likely take the whole turn off to even clear this and if he's doing that he probably can't glide as well yeah i do think the solar usage was an interesting talking point though because again he had such an insane setup to the point where he had you know the three anacondras hand where basically everything is free at that point he's now reduced that down to two he does of course still have funkle fortunes available so his card draw is fine as long as he gets that anaconda wait he's not Oh, okay. Not. Oh, not. this is this feels like the way he loses. I don't know. I mean, I agree to an extent, but I think we also have to be a little bit careful of cast division here, right? Because it's a four card hand at the time that you would be pressing glide. Like, how much credit do you give that hand at being this perfect for Lady Anaconda? Let me look. Guild Trader. Okay. Well, I'm okay. I'm trying to work out what he does against an average anaconda, right? Like a okay-ish or a playable anaconda. And I guess he does have ways to fight versus it with Guild Trader, Fell Barrage, and the the swing plus Spectral, of course. Well, I think the idea is if their hand isn't good enough, they just won't don't go it. off, yeah, yeah. right? And then, yeah, that's what Tice is banking on. That's been the reality. Right? Like, that's, that's even been the reality, and what we're seeing is a very good Anaconda hand to go off with, and uh, Gabby still hasn't done it. And now, if anything, Tice is just like, well, cool. Even more glide value than I had before. I think of anything. You can glide from both sides. You can. Potions, flasks, B O E. I got it all. He's just going to cash this out first and... Oh, glide. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tice is a gamer. He just wakes up to game... Oh, it worked! It's the first time I've ever seen the fabled play the top deck one to tilt your opponent <laughs> actually work. I thought it was a myth. No. You just don't realize that you don't see your opponent on ladder. <laughs> An Wait, Anaconda's back. The glide didn't work. <laughs> but again, I do like. Obviously, I was defending the line at the time, but I do actually really like that line. Yeah. No, no, it was, good. Think, it was good. I think it was a very good recognition oh. of the situation. And cast division is a hell of a drug sometimes, and even with the cast division, it ended up working, even though we would have expected an Anaconda play on the other side. I think that was a really good turn from Tyson. Okay, and I think. Even though you were talking about you wouldn't do an average Anaconda turn, I think Gabby's been forced into it now with 13 health and a dream. Uh, so I think got forced into this, gets one ton Anaconda, of course, because of what Germination does. Has double Scenario Ward next turn, if the Anacondras live. Wait, is he leaving these up? Apparently. Okay. I guess he couldn't oh have guaranteed my, oh my. killed them, right? No, he would have definitely needed help, yeah. If he'd have, even if he'd have gone like Arcanist and uh, Spectral, he would have had to oh. have hit Immolation or a plus at that point. Oh, they're good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some Blyz 8s if I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. But I think by investing this way, he gives himself the best chances of like a two turn clear maybe, right? By just allowing the board to get added to on that turn. But sure. now he has all of this mana to play with like maybe another guild trader, multiple AOEs, fell screen blast, so on. It uh, has not helped how much health the two eight drops that got summoned have. It's not helped that two eight drops got summoned at all, which was very unlikely from your opponent's two card hand. Okay, he can stack this Jace a little bit with immolation fell screen blast. 
can. He does now have Guild Trader with the Talented Arcanist, though. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you always have to keep track of the fact this is very weird if you've played Demon Hunter for quite a long time at this point. Arcanist spell damage is a battle cry. Guild Trader spell damage is yes. not. So the spell damage has to stay alive on the Guild Trader. Oof. It's a swing into the one of the Anacondras here. He has Guild Trader, Fell Screen Blast. Yep. And most importantly, so he has Guild Trader, Fell Barrage to the face. He does. Yeah, it's a big deal. Big deal also, these uh, last few cards, because he's a couple of turns away here from taking over to 10 mana, which means those Furies are going to get upgraded to max, and he might just need them upgraded to max if he is going to get out of here with uh, the max damage. I was, I was just going to say, Tyus, don't you dare press that fail Barrage without trading the Anaconda first. Hmm. Bosh, bosh, take eight to the face. Ooh. Yeah, one mana J seems good. Yep. Alignment now also means that the entirety of the deck that has not yet been drawn costs zero because each card will be discounted as it's drawn. So, Tice? Where is he on the old lethal count? Yeah, so I mean, there's two Furies left remaining in the deck, but it does mean that they now will oh. not ever upgrade to that plus four because of the Celestial Alignment coming into play. So that does at least play around that from Gabby's regard. So in that case, is it even worth delaying the Spectral? I guess the Jace dies anyway in every single out, right? I think the Jace is dead every time. Sure. So like, it's not like playing Jace now sticks the Jace. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. Oh, apologies, I got hit by the uh, the deck uh, the deck tracker bug with the uh, the upgradable cards. He only had one remaining. Looking with a new played one earlier, but that does mean, however, in which case, if he'd have just gone Fury that turn, empty board, right? So that was one rank few, one rank, one rank two Fury played, another one in hand that he could play for zero. That's six. You double that. That's twelve. That's a fell barrage twice, right? That's eight more. Wasn't that just twenty? I'm not sure, but what I can say is that. With that Fury gone, the draws were guaranteed for Tice, in which he sets up the um, the Magtheridon, uh, which again, I don't think there's a great response, because also bear in mind, although that was a good turn from Gabby, he saw two natural Scenarion wards played, so there was no Solar Scenarion coming out, there was no realistic response in any way to a Magtheridon, so if he had guaranteed Magtheridon off the bottom of the deck to play and proc, I don't mind it, honestly, over the Jace. Maybe he just didn't want to think about the different outcomes of Jace ordering, if it would have made any difference. But yeah, either way. Uh, yeah, fair enough. You know what I mean? Like, if you see, drew the whole deck, right? Hacking for three. Yeah, I'm interested as to whether... But at that turn aside, the rest of the game, I think, was super well played yeah. from uh, Tice. I think it's two turns in particular. Uh, one where he left the Anaconda in hand, the turn that we were debating. Obviously, I was very in favor of that play at the time. Um, but then obviously after that, the follow-up turn, when the Anaconda actually came down and he just left the board there, right, and said, do your worst. Gabby kind of did, right? The remainder of the hand was two Scenarian Wards, yeah. which, like a Solar Scenarian level thing at that point, is quite a high-tier thing to have happened to you. Obviously, if you hit card draw at that point, then the world is your oyster and you could do all manner of things. But one Solar was gone, one Arbor was gone, one Fungal Fortunes was gone, the hand was very empty. I think Tice was well within his rights to think not too much was going to get added to the board at that point. Even though the eight drops were huge, he was still able to very comfortably navigate through it at the end. Yeah, my only real question mark about the entire game is just how much damage he actually had at <laughs> yeah. that turn, at, at the end. But like you said, he still, you know, saw a pretty much guaranteed line and executed it fine. And here we go into game number three, Demon Hunter Mirror. But Gabby is on the slightly older style of Fell Demon Hunter with the Moargs, the Ilganoth, most importantly, two Skulls, Fell Gorges. There is, again, a Magtheridon. But overall, a slightly uh, not quite the new school list. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how much time you, you may or may not have had to actually prep, like, this matchup because it's a bit weird. But do you have any uh, initial thoughts, at least just going into it, as to who should look better? Is the Ilganoth? off the deciding factor in Gabby's favor or is just the more consistent sort of card draw uh, and damage dealt worth it for tights 
I think, honestly, the Magtherodons are going to be a big factor overall. That is also a relatively new development since, you know, the majority of the time I spent playing uh, Fell Demon Hunter. I do also think the dynamic of Fell Demon Hunter is really hard to navigate until you put quite a lot of time into it, and the mirror match in particular, because the ability to fatigue your opponent does actually surprisingly rear its head in a lot of positions. If you start doing things like this, like Gabby's been doing, sinking a lot of damage in early, Fell Barrage comes down, pushing damage, suddenly your opponent draws Eldraki Warblades, sits there with it, starts healing for a million with their Furies on the other side, and undoes that damage very rapidly. However, now some cards like Chaos Leech and I-Beams are being cut out instead for like Magtherodon and extra threats. Maybe the total uh, rebound ability with healing is a little bit too limited uh, to be able to do that, particularly for Tice version of the deck, that practice group version of the deck that has cut the Moogs out entirely, right? right? And Moog Chaos Leech, Moog I-Beam was generally just such a huge chunk of healing that you could pick up in the matchup. That's what led sometimes to those fatigue scenarios. So I think with all that in mind, Gabby's doing the right thing. Just pressure and kind of force the healing turn after turn from Tice because I think over time he has more healing built up in his deck if they are going to continue mm -hmm. to race each other in that regard. As I was mid-sentence there, it uh, twigged in my brain what I did wrong at the end of the last game. I uh, I added the Fury that had already been cast and then doubled it, which obviously you don't because it's right. being played on that turn. It's already being played before. So no, I think Tice got that absolutely right as well. Just to clear that up. Well, there is Magtheridon. And... Unlikely. But... Oh no, there is a guaranteed clear, right? The Immolation Zero Mana, I didn't see that one. So he could just go Magthurid on Imo Imo. It's a bit of a commitment. But it's also a 12-12. <laughs> it is also a 12-12, yeah, you're not wrong. Sometimes you just commit to a 12-12. Yep. The hand is dry, but not quite as dry as it might initially appear, because there is the Blood Mage draw to pick up here as well. Obviously, the Blood Mage does need to get dealt with, or else the uh, the Magtheridon swing is even easier than it is as described. Yep. Immolation Aura, also a very bad card in this matchup. Almost entirely pointless, it has to be said. So I think yeah, a lot will be happy to cash it out here in most scenarios. Yeah, a lot of the time you actually can throw it away due to hand size issues in this matchup, right? Yes. And just kind of just dump it so it's gone to Ooh. get to an outcast. But... Talked about commitment issues, and now Gabby's got them. Like <laughs> third on versus skull. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I remember we were just you know airing our dirty laundry on stream, just 20 minutes talking about our commitment. Even at that, you go to oh, you know, I've got some commitment issues, and they show you a 12, 12, and you're like, oh, okay, solved. <laughs> I'll commit to that. In <laughs> yeah, our exactly. Problem solved. <laughs> yeah. But now with the skull, it's a whole different question. <laughs> but Tice is on 15. I grow impatient. Oh, it's oh, so I close. Yeah, I know, I know. It's the I'm fact like... that Jace is already in hand as well. So yeah. if Skull doesn't get played this turn, it's just not getting played, right? Like, yeah. it's just not happening. I grow short. So here he's... It's up again. Okay. Yeah. So here he has Jace dump the emo the turn after. Well, not not Jace next turn, of course, but he's got a chance at just getting Skull after Jace. Because remember, Gabby is running Ilganoth and, and yes. Combo, right? So his Skull isn't dead just because Jace is already in hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, is this right? I mean, I can't not support a play that puts a 12-12 on the board, can I? That's ridiculous. I don't think I'm willing to die on that hill. Oh, look at this, though. That is pretty sick. Gone. But it's a lot of face damage he's missed by doing that as well, right? That's two yeah, Arcanists is. just gone straight out the window. He had two, of course, like we said. It's a 12-12, but... Yep. No I'm... other realistic way to deal with it. Immolation could just get dumped here impatient. to set up for Jace next turn into Skull turn after. Yeah, I don't. It's a little bit weird. Find but... It. but you do want to. You keep the Arcanist, of course, right? Like, even though Immo only deals two to these, it, I think you just leave them and let Jace clean them up turn after. 
Yeah, I think because your plan is ripping Skull, you want to yep. have an Arcanist just exactly, in your hands yeah. to go with that combo plan somewhere down the line. Just this turn sucks now. And this is kind of my fear, right? This is one of the dynamics I was breaking down at the start, where the player who establishes themselves as the aggressor in this mirror does sometimes hit the wall, mm. and then they've committed so much stuff that they gradually then start to fall behind as the uh, the player who was playing defense originally manages to climb their way back into the game. Because now, I mean, we can see, like, good job, you did 16 damage. Well done, here's your medal. But there's a Warblades equip on the other side. There's two Furies in hand. There's still Chaos Strikes, everything else to draw. There's Spell Damage, Fell Screen yep. Blast available as well. Like, the rebound ability for the healing is very much there. Another happy guildy. Daddy's needs any form of card draw, finds it, does get the overflow discount there as well. Rocking twice. Very nice procs as well, picking up the Sigil immediately for the next turn. And even Chaos Strike as well, right? Like that's just a lot of damage. Gonna take the heal now with the two Fioris, and I imagine if he's doing that, he's doing Chaos Strike. Is he gonna hold it for card draw? He's already trying to play Jace. Amidst the flames, only in play. Yeah. Check the outcome here. A little bit more card draw. The eye beam. Not well, it does heal him a bit, so it does change something, but not too much. Double fell barrage going off though, and now suddenly 15. There is the. Weapon, of course, the Aldraki Warblades for Tice already equipped, but Gabby did just see double Fury, so yes. unless it's a like instant Jace follow-up, he's still uh, on course to be able to do something pretty easy if he gets Ilganoth anytime soon, right? Ilganoth, Arcanist, one more Arg and a Fell Screen Blast. Looks like it's very doable right now, as long as Tice doesn't heal too much. Hmm... It'd run dry on the card draw, though, unless he wants to be dropping those glides. I think the way he went about the turn pretty clearly signified that he didn't want to be doing that this turn, but I think now he doesn't really have an option. Be ripping the glide, and I think he'll wait and see what the outcome of the glide is before he decides whether this attack with the weapon is being swung. Obviously, it seems kind of ridiculous to not attack with the uh, four damage here, having already played a Chaos Strike, but sometimes in this matchup, you do have to value a little bit more healing than that, but in the end, it does go ahead and swing. Alas, poor war. First card, off the top. Ilganoth, boom, three mana. And a fell screen blast as well. Doesn't quite have the minions though, which is the problem with the double fell screen blast plays. Unless you do like the weird sort of Ilganoth, Moag fell screen blast, Arcanist fell screen blast. You know those kind of halfway between plays to to make up some of the damage. He also sees that there's no Aldraki wall blades now for Tice. Maybe he also knows. What? The glide number two is a huge factor in the game and if yeah. he sits here with all of these incredibly powerful discounted cards in his hand he could very rapidly get in trouble if that second glide is able to be worked into outcast position yeah i was looking at whether he plays skull but glide a completely valid issue of course i like dumping the fury if this is going to be his plan i was also staring at whether he could just throw an ilgan off on the board <laughs> same honestly mm. i thought about the very same thing that's kind of sick, right? Oh, he's going to trade it? Okay, interesting. This might not be quite up to date because I pressed it before he drew the card. Apologies. Nice. Yeah. Still, that's the general plan of what Tice has left. Mainly the Jace as the big one, of course. Finds the Guild Trader back again at this point. I was curious as to whether he would just play out the Guild Trader from hand, play the Fell Barrage, just <gasps> to dump some cards from hand, and then play the Glide. Uh, he does, of course, end up playing the Glide anyway, but he chose to cycle to give himself other options. That now gets him to quest completion. Finds Jace in hand as well. Still no uh, second Warblades, though, is the big problem, because that's what Tice really needs to be able to stabilize this health total. He isn't going to shuffle the Guild Trader. He wants to wait till the Curtis has been played, I imagine. 
or he just wants to play it with these fell screen blasts that he oh. has in hand to actually give himself the time he needs. I guess it's just at this point, is he expecting Gabby to play minions and Ty's not be dead? Well, what if it's even just like Kurtris Guild Trader shoot your own two minions? Okay, yeah, on the yeah, okay, turn, right? okay. Or double Guild Trader fell screen blast. That's a turn. And just checking out what's in the pool here. Double Chaos Strike, one Fel Barrage, uh, one Immolation Aura, I think. Uh, what else? Chaos Leech is in there, so there's a certain level of... Tice could actually play Jace to get a bit of heal if he really needs it. Two Furies as well, remember, for Tice. And Kate, yep. you, you're going to get hit by the Deck Tracker bug as well, but yep. they are in there. No, 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 yep, you're right. So again, that, that kind of incentivizes waiting for the second Warblades if you're going to do that, if you want to really go for the big heals. Yep, spot on. Oh, it's so hard, right? Like, cycling these guild traders looking for Warblades makes perfect sense, but at the same time, you have to be somewhat scared of just immediately dying. You're at eight when you take away the two that you can already see. At seven when you add in the hero power to that. Like, that is a tough spot well, to be in, especially with a sigil loaded up. Also, the frustration is he makes his board weaker to heal, but he has yeah. Jace in hand, so if he could have hit for seven or even ten with these minions next turn, plus True. Jace, there's a chance he yeah, just yeah, wins yeah. off that so it really is you've just got a, you've got three doors and you've just got to pick one. Oh, the fury is such a clutch draw he drew the chaos strike as a blocker that was so rare that you're able to draw chaos strike oh, wait a minute a skull and then play oh, the chaos off. strike what, uh, one mana off yeah he can't actually yeah. just get the organos down yeah sorry yeah one mana off is what i meant yeah mm-hmm So he can. Oh, is it fair to say he can Moag? Oh no! Oh. It, both players have such <laughs> tough decisions. It's so close. He does have another Fell Screen Blast. Maybe he can like Moag Fell Screen Blast this turn just to clear up the board and heal. I uh, I apologise, dear viewers, for my uh, my co-host just growling at you. Apparently, because, look, I'm taking them on a journey, right? Yeah. Of emotion is what it's like for the players in this game. Happy just rocking. <laughs> Singing a nursery rhyme. Or composing a nursery rhyme by the looks of things, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, demons. Demons. But this Second is the problem, time. right? Three mana Ilganoth has come into the hand here for Gabby, and I think this second time around is going to be a lot more impactful because there's no way to disrupt it this time. That's a big heal. It is a big heal, but it's 36 on the other yeah. side. It's just all there. It's the classic combo. It's all available. And honestly, this is been close to the way I would have expected this match to play out in general, is that, yes, the the extra card draw and quest completion is nice for Tice's version, but the problem is it's like the, the version Gabby plays is, yeah, well, whatever you can do, I can do better, right? Where uh, Because there is this Ilganoth extra damage burst available, and it's not just healing, it's offensive options as well. And we see that really pay off for Gabby, because honestly, he nearly had the lethal with Ilganoth a few turns ago, and if it wasn't for the glide, uh, then he would have been in a lot of trouble. But still, Gabby takes the victory and continues on this series with a win with the Demon Hunter. But again, he's got to make this Demon Hunter work uh, for the rest of this series if he wants to take the overall win with Tice having Shaman and Rogue left over which suddenly when you look at it subtle we might be in for a sweep <laughs> I mean we might well be yeah but uh, just to present the counter argument though Gabby did hit Organoth with Skull twice during that game right which is the absolute dream scenario if he hadn't suddenly that forget that game becomes a lot trickier right if he actually has to pay six for his Ilganoth, if he actually has to pay two for his uh spell damage if he actually has to play two for his moog then he's in trouble then he's not 36ing his opponent right and then the back and forth of uh tice actually trying to heal finding the second war blades all that stuff actually comes into play and i think when you factor in that you know firstly your skull has to hit this counts and then even if they do your opponent
component has glide to disrupt those discounts as it did happen once like you know perhaps there is a little bit more game for that version of the deck that uh, Tice, Casey and Co are playing mm. than we are initially giving it credit for but yes now there is potentially a big reverse sweep on the cards for uh, Gabby on the Fell Demon Hunter on the other side. Yeah, and sorry, I said Rogue, and I didn't mean it. I was looking at the wrong band. He's got Shaman and Hunter left over. Apologies. Uh, I was looking at what Gabby banned and not what Tice. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, so it's going to be Hunter and Shaman, which uh, arguably could be worse, <laughs> actually, having that those matchups instead of Rogue, right, for Tice, I mean. Uh, because Hunter, again, we've mentioned this, that the deck just performs well. It's not quite uh, to the levels of the version Tice was playing of the Demon Hunter, but it's the same thing, right? It's all the removal all the heal and this one even has moargs which means that you can play for the board early with the moargs and use them to double up on the healing as well from the likes of fell screen blast or aoe removal but it looks like tice is going to queue in the quest shaman first I would completely reverse that as well. Like, I, I don't necessarily have the amount of hours under the belt with this new version of the deck that Casey and Tice are playing, but to my mind, Gabby's version of the deck is even better against Face Hunter than what we've seen already previously. Like, the Hunter is just dead to that deck. Forget about it. And that's why you're seeing the uh, Quest Shaman get kicked up here instead. I like this matchup for Fell Demon Hunter as well. Some people disagree. Those people are wrong. But still, um, it's going to be impacted as well by the nerfs. And I think this is in particular a matchup that's impacted by the Quest Speed nerf and not the Perpetual Flame nerf so much. Because we have seen matchups where it's like, ah, whatever. Like, you know, Quest completion isn't necessarily your win condition anyway. It's that perpetual flame costing you more. That's how I'm going to punish you. In this particular matchup, I feel like the pressure in the early game, usually fairly irrelevant. The Demon Hunter can chew through it quite nicely. The perpetual flame being a, a, a fantastic clearing tool doesn't really matter. It's not like the Demon Hunter's playing out a big board full of minions anyway. But the big factor is how quickly the Shaman can get to that quest and then play like Brukan Charge Cool. Really <laughs> yeah, Brukan Charge Cool Vivid Spores, yep. that kind of nonsense, right? And then good luck getting your J spells to attack face after that point ever again so the fact that that now happens slower because of the added quest ticks to the uh, the shaman quest i think this is probably one of the few matchups that, that actually becomes super relevant at least that we have seen on stream during grandmasters this weekend yeah, I actually quite like Gabby's keep here when you talk about speed of game overall because he kept the Fury and the Fel Barrage and the Skull. So then he knew 100% he could make that Skull active and ready for turn 5 if he wanted to hold the coin. Uh, and it, there's no questions, there's no issues of, oh, well, what if Ilganoth gets there instead, if, if I mulligan one of these other cards. And also, Fury and Fel Barrage are decent against the early game typical Shaman openings, right? They kill enough minions maybe with the help of a hero power that they're not that he's not like dumping random cards in the early game right they still have use and they get his skull to the right part of the hand yeah and there's a lot of potential blockers that you can get in that spot yeah. uh, to the left of skull it's not just the ones that obviously you can't play um early enough with the jace the organoth for example but even a card like Immolation Aura going into that spot feels bad because Immolation Aura is by far your most valuable card in the matchup and able to clear away the vast majority of boards that your opponent can yep. generate. So if you are throwing one away early in the game to make room for a skull, that actually cuts into your win rate quite significantly, I would say. Same with like a Moag as well, right? Because the Moag yep. is, uh, again, normally a card you can get away with in some decks just playing out there. But in this one, like it, it benefits Shaman just as much as it benefits the Demon Hunter especially. Coin skull, though, all part of the plan here for Gabby. And then soon enough, I imagine that spectral could become very outcastable. It, do, it would require Tice making some form of board, because you mentioned throwing away an Arcanist and a Immolation Aura. You need a good reason for those two. Mm -hmm. That's going to get value with a couple of Guidance. All the resources in the world here. Yeah, Landslide, Stormstrike, not really ideal. Those not really ideal either, it's got to be said. I think he just wants board presence and damage more than anything else. Stormstrike's a little bit of damage, but not as efficient as it could be. Phoenix, cheapest, most playable, can set up some damage if needed. 
Yeah, tie it into a turn yeah, with yeah. either like Lightning Bolt Serpent Shrine or even just play it on your like Fireheart turn further down the yeah. line. Play it to wake up into your Fireheart turn further. And although Mini Mage is often a pickup in these kind of discoveries, especially in Mage, uh, it dies to a rough sneeze from the Demon Hunters. So I'm a really? little bit surprised. Yeah, I've done really That's shot. Same. Wait a minute. Magtheridon, go! But proc it this Good turn act. as well. He could just make mm. a 12 12, yeah. Probably too risky, I think. To Wait, can he? No, out. he can't, right? What's the play to kill all three? I don't think he can do it, can he? He can't fit in the Arcanist with it anyway, so he can't do the zero mana thing. Oh, it was just off, actually. No, I yeah, think yeah, it's just yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still just going to drop it, set it up for the following turn. I think this is pretty smart. Get it in play. He can still choose to uh, dump the stuff from the left-hand side of the hand if he wants to, to set up that Spectral site. Because uh, actually he could go like Arcanist Immolation Aura here just to get rid of it. Um, to clear the board. Obviously, that would clear the board anyway, which is a bit weird, using kind of double AoEs just to get your 12-12 in play, but then that sets up the Spectral Sight on the far left, and with zero mana Moog, zero mana Philosophy in hand, I think you do want to be drawing cards through your deck, looking for that Ilganoth sooner rather than later. Yeah, and this is a play without too much risk of the negatives, right? Because, for example, you, you, like Gabby's just seen two Guidance get played, so there can be Revolve, which just stops Magtheridon proccing. There can be Devolving Missiles, which then will, once Magtheridon does proc, if you proc it next turn, it just gets reduced down to nothing. Uh, yep. But there's no real downside, right? He didn't really have a better option that turn. If those cards aren't there, then the Magtheridon's insane. So, yeah, it just seems reasonable here from Gabby. And like you said, he's got a backup plan, worst case, of an Outcast Spectral Sight. Tyson's like, oh, where's Bloodlust when you need it? Curious, he did that with a Totem instead of a Mini Mage on that turn, which I do find a little bit surprising, Kobe said, missing out on a little bit of damage. Obviously, he knows the board is getting cleared, almost certainly this turn. I think important thing, first and foremost, make sure you play a spell that turn, because you're probably going to want to use the uh, Torrent as part of your clearing power on the following turn. Um, and because of this interaction, right, maybe this is his plan because this is going to be potentially a 12-9 when it wakes up if it was done with the Immolation Aura instead. And then Mini Mage Torrent is actually able to deal the 9 damage super cleanly, so maybe that is why the uh, yep. Mini Mage was being held on to. As it stands, Gabby did it with uh, Felscream instead of Immolation Aura, which means it is the full 12-12 that has to be dealt with. Let's get clean, though, by the Mini Mage and Lightning Bolt now, right? Can't quite fit in the Storm Strike, which would be a little bit more efficient. Yeah, I was looking at that, but it would be six mana, right? So, mm -hmm. quite good enough this turn. It looks good to me, though. He gets the 3-3 three, three out of it as well. I believe that was one last proc, right? Wait, how am I using this? Oh, he's using Landslide instead. Interesting. Yeah, one more proc would have been the second stage, so he would have got the 3-3, three, three, but just to go with the Landslide instead, preserve the Lightning Bolt. Nice, finds a backup Immolation Aura, so seems happy using his Immolation Aura. It does seem like Gabby has endeavoured to be very greedy with that card so far, this matchup, which I do absolutely agree with, very much on board. Bit of a nothing hit there with the Perpetual Flame for Tice. Mm -hmm. It was Feral Spirit. He's just seen Immolation Aura. So Feral Spirit to create two 2-3 two, Wolves and then a 3-3 three, three Elemental. He's going to hit the board now with that quest proccing second time. A little reminder, of course, the quest level 3, as you can see there, is 0 out of 3 this patch. So it has been slowed down just a little bit, like Salt was talking about earlier on. But Tice is looking to put the pressure on, and that look here might just be good enough. 
Yeah, taking the six extra damage over the slightly uh, thicker minion with the Arcane Devourer. Did not have the ability to follow up any further with additional spells that turn, or that might have changed his mind. Obviously, massive minions with huge health individually are a huge problem for this Demon Hunter to deal with. But I think the uh, difference in health between the two was not significant enough to be turning down six damage in that spot. Yeah, I agree. The, the fear that it dies is just too much. Mm -hmm. Gabby's on the back foot now, has to defend once again, and every Arcanist, every Moag that he looks at using is one less for potential combos later on. Right. Gonna use the eye beam here in order okay, to okay. push five. five. Yeah. Oh, five, sorry. Hero yeah, power, yep, 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 of course. And that's it, like, I kind of like him almost towing the line right. He has to use an Arcanist, but he retains the two Moags and gets to swing face. So pushing yep. five itself. Like, if Arcanist dealt five damage to face in this game of Hearthstone, Gabby would probably be okay no. with it. Oh, what? Three unplayable cards for Tice off the Fireheart. That is brutal. Hmm. That's a little bit rough, isn't it? What do you even do? That's so gross! Literally, he's looking at six different cards at that point. The only thing he can do with any of them is kill his own minion. And push three. And <laughs> push three, oh, yeah. Don't sell it short, so <laughs> Gross. He's coming down now, and that's going to be a board clear, cards drawn, damage pushed. Ticks all the boxes. Yeah, this is just too much now. Fury stacking in, Chaos Strike stacking in, extra damage going through. And with only, what, six cards remaining at this point, it's going to be very, very tough for uh, Tice to put anything together here. Tiny toys, go! Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to Those? Fuck! Okay, a taunt, that's something. Uh... Let's make him safe, though, with Felber, the Felbarage interaction, right? There's so many two health minions. <laughs> Does it? I mean, in, in, from, from Tice's sake, like just saying he's got that many two twos means that Felbarage there is just going to hit the two twos, which are pointless. Yeah, no, I was just kind of curious because he had Fury in hand already, uh, which was plus four at that point, plus the hero power going face. That's already five to face, which means face is also the lowest health character at that point. So there's only two health in play, right? People often forget that sometimes face yeah. can be the lowest health. So I just wonder, like, if you could find any way to push one extra damage in that position, just pressing Fel Barrage was lethal. But of course, in the end, with only five cards left in the deck, ripping Skull is almost guaranteed right. to in that position anyway. Just hit the Ilganoth square up the series makes the most sense but I think there might have been uh, some different cheeky ways to piece that one together in the end if the Yorganoth hadn't have been found. Yeah and it was a tough one for Tice as we kind of expected it to be. I am with you on this uh, generally that this is pretty good for the Demon Hunter and it yeah, that's the deck we just saw, but it's not the deck we're going to see. Uh, that's not how this works. Uh, we are in last hero standing, of course. It does mean that Tice is going to be on his hunter for the last game, not this Shaman. So this is just a look at what got beat up uh, that you just saw on stream. But yeah, as I was saying, tough, tough matchup, not unwinnable. Tough matchup for the Shaman. And it only gets worse from this point for, for Tice, right? Because I think the Demon Hunter versus Hunter especially 
is about as bad as it gets, right? Uh, even yep. Shadow Priest pre-nerf, of course, uh, had Elusha shenanigans that can always win you a game. Whereas Hunter, uh, weirdly enough, uh, people may not feel like this is true, but plays probably some of the most honest Hearthstone that exists right now. So, <laughs> it, and, and honest a lot of the time means predictable. And if it's predictable, like we have said, like we were talking about in testing, like you've seen players do time and time again, it's like, okay, I'm on 25, you've got eight power, hit me. The max you'll probably be able to do is like 12, 15, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then I'll heal. Done. Next sort of thing. So although Tice is, uh, sorry, Gabby is playing the slightly older version with maybe not as much sort of freedom to just heal whenever, it still has more than enough healing available. And most importantly, those two Moags. So an uphill battle here for Tice if he wants to hang on this week in Grandmasters and try and bank some much needed points. Yeah, I think there's a card that's been cut from the deck for the Magtheridon that's now being played by basically everyone, and it was a one-off philosophy in most people's lists, which I think having that cut disincentivizes you from keeping Moargs too often, because otherwise I do think they're very reasonable keeps just to play as tempo minions early on, but I agree with absolutely everything that you said about this matchup. It is a miserable experience for the face hunter. You just get to toy with them in most scenarios, because you just have everything that you possibly need to be able to put this together. The only scenario, I think, where hunter has a chance, it's fast opening versus no Warblades draw, because the uh, the Aldraki is just too much persistent healing over the course of several turns to yeah. be able to deal with in most scenarios. And and there are ways, right? Like this Fell Demon Hunter, uh, the version Gabby's playing, y you can be starved of card draw in certain instances and in certain openings, right? Yes. I've had games where you just don't hit card draw and you're like, okay, I can kill the first four minions. And then suddenly you just don't like random odds of odds and ends of spells and stuff, and you can't actually get that card draw cooking. And without card draw, the deck is significantly worse. So there are options here, and Tice has a reasonable-ish opening. But again, the likes of aim shot face this turn you know that's getting healed later on like no questions so i would almost even like yeah there you go what where one one hero power just to be like well it's kind of free damage because it's not actually taking up a card that is for chaos Ooh, philosophy. I beam no doesn't find it interesting yeah philosophy is a thought and uh, he could also just Vile Fiend Trainer this turn to win board. However, I would imagine he does want to be playing cards oh. from the left-hand side of his hand. Kurt wins board as well, right? True. Yeah. Very fair. There is some level... Himself. Oh, on. One more draw for, say, Felscreen Blast off the top would be the absolute dream, right? So you could just have a big heal turn with the Moog and the Blood Mage and then set up for that Skull on the following turn. I was kind of interested there whether Gabby might just go pick something, don't play it, whatever it is, right? And then just spend his uh, mana on the left-hand side anyway, but that didn't quite pan out to be able to play Skull on five with the amount of mana that he still had left to spend. And there's some level of board synergy with the Rhino this turn, right? The three falls kind of pretend they hit each other, or if Gabby even hero powers to clear it off, that means yeah. Kurtris goes down to one health, which means Halo Rhino, <laughs> and it's just going to smack him and push even more damage. So this play from Tice makes sense, even though potentially uh, Rinlin's Rifle, Piercing Shot, so on, could look fine. This was just generally works out much better. But I, I really like the response. Like Gabby's like, okay, throw your Rhino there. I just have a Moag on board. Yes, exactly. If you want to attack into a one health minion, congratulations. I have a Moog in play and I'm playing Skull of Gul'dan next turn. And Good Thalnos to draw as well. Like, all, all have spell damage, like whatever. I think you would probably, if you're going to do it, trade into the Thalnos. It's close, but I think you would leave up the 3-1 and the Moog in that position. But I think also, more importantly, you just wouldn't do that. I don't <laughs> think that's going to be the play this turn. That's what I mean. For, for what was a good setup from Tice, it's just Gabby just insta good response right yeah let none survive gross down to 13 gabby does need to find some healing here Alas, war. war blades would be the dream of the skull 
Doesn't look delighted with the outcome so far. No, he looks very confused about what his deck is doing right now because he is hitting zero healing. Yeah, that's does the, not happen. That's the problem. It's one of the weird matchups, even though it's an aggro and arguably minion based matchup. Immolation Aura actually isn't that great because yeah. that you, you're taking so much spell damage as well throughout the course of the game that you actually need the heals more than you need the minion. It's not like you versus Shadow Priest where all or 99% of their damage is from minions hitting you in the face. If you clear board, then you're fine. <laughs> so annoying. Silver lining, at least he does have zero mana immolation aura here, so he can draw the extra card off the blood mage if need be. And I imagine that is what is going to happen here because this man needs healing. Stop. Get this man some healing. Yeah. 17 cards, uh, sorry, 16 cards still left in the deck. And I can't even show me yet. So, yeah, I'm lucky. I, grow impatient. I think you attack first, play the Immolation Aura, because that adds Skull to the list of outs off the top that are still playable, um, including this okay, into Skull. Draw. Including that into Skull. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Now, Sigil, is that ever worth it over Skull? Probably not with everything he actually wants to hit, right? He can still Arcanist heal if he really needs to. There's our Draki Warblades. There's Fury. Recovery time. Yeah, recovery starts from here. He goes back up to 11. 11 from 7 for the Hunter. Is it even possible? No, right? Aim shot, quick shot, hero power. Is 10? Is that the max on 7? Yes. Minion, piercing shot, quick shot. No, that's less. Eh, can't think of a way to do 11. Maybe with like terrain equipped and minions on board or whatever, but like strictly from just off board throwing burn at face, don't think it's doable. But I think like, is it just Ringling's hero power and try and get explosive? But if there's no more weapon buffs, it Gabby's attack is almost nullified. Let none survive. I can and see then, that. And then hope to draw a minion to actually piercing next turn or, you know, whatever to draw for next turn. Maybe the aim shot comes off the top and so on. I just think to try and to just nullify some healing is important and Rinling's pushes two can potentially push four or even out the heal and you still get to hero power. Could preload the Felmore, that's close, but I don't know if you expect to have two turns in you. That's my only worry with the Felmore <laughs> play, I'm being serious, like... So he, what, he dealt six this turn as opposed to... With the swing. To, with the six, he dealt six, as opposed to... If he hit Explosive Trap, that's arguably six as well, because he would be doing Ringlings for two, Hero Power for two, Explosive Trap for two. Uh, very similar. But I think having the mana invested in the Ringling's Rifle might be better. But actually, with Rhino in hand, maybe having the mana invested in the True Aim Crescent is better because that gives uh, Gabby an extra headache as opposed to what he has yeah. to play around. In the end, yeah, it does end up all being uh, rather a formality here because with Chaos Strike, with Fury, with Fel Barrage going off again in this situation, he just needs to squeeze in that hero power and the reverse sweep with the Fel Demon Hunter is going to come to reality. And you've got to ask the question, right? If you're coming up with this new Demon Hunter and you queue it up, your opponent's Gabby, and you play it out until you get to the mirror match where your opponent beats you with their normal, old school, fell Demon Hunter and then proceeds to sweep the rest of their lineup with the old school fell Demon Hunter, why did you change? Like, do you know what I mean? You've built, you've built a lineup that has got swept by the deck you've deliberately not included by changing it up and lost that in the mirror match. I, like you've got to at least ask some questions about that, I suppose. I, well, I have the answer, and it's actually something you've already said today. Go on. Peer pressure. <laughs> told it was good, so it's good. Uh, true. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I do agree, and, and the problem again as well is like, it, let's just wind this back, and it, it, it was a tough one for Tys to try and actually take, obviously with that Demon Hunter winning the kind of mirror match. But again, you look at the potential ban as well, because the, the 
Demon Hunter for Gabby looked so strong when you look at Shaman Hunter being on the leftover for Tice, and he did actually ban out the warrior, which was the big warrior. So then you'd have to dive all the way in on, well, is big warrior more of a danger in uh, these matchups against Shaman yeah. and Hunter than the Demon Hunter is? And, and honestly, I... I'd have some questions about that as well. Uh, obviously, I d generally don't put as much time into every single specific matchup as some of the players do because they have their lineup and I have 16 potential lineups, but still. Let's take a look at the semifinals here. Yala, Casey, Letta, and Gabby. So really here, Sotil, uh, obviously Yala uh, looking to really cash in on some points 